Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Let's talk some football. Jacob and T-Bob back in action this morning on OTB, and they had Blake Baker come on and join them for about 15 minutes. Of course, Blake Baker spent some time at LSU's linebackers coach, then moved on and, uh, and has had a couple stops since, including a defensive coordinator gig up there at Missouri, and uh, now has been tasked with overhauling Brian Kelly's defense and making it a little bit more respectable than we saw last year. Um, and I was... I thought the interview was incredibly well done by Jacob and T-Bob. I thought it was really, really fascinating, uh, some of the things that Blake Baker had to say. And you know, the first thing that we'll, we'll hear from Blake Baker on is his staff. I want to be, um, before we get to the soundbite, like, I don't know what to make of LSU's defense last year. I don't know how much of it was coaching. I don't know how much of it was poor evaluation and recruiting. I don't know how much of it was poor evaluation in the transfer portal. I don't know how much of it was poor game planning. I don't know how much of it was poor execution. I don't know how much of it was injury related. It was probably a little bit of all of it. But I think we probably have forgotten. Not forgotten. That's the wrong word. We probably don't fully remember how bad it was. I cannot recall an LSU team on the football field that made me as apathetic as I was when LSU was on defense last year for the first 10 weeks of the season. Like, when Missouri was going right up and down the field every single time, I could not even get upset. I would just sit there and chuckle, be like, this is unbelievable. Like, how could I be upset? How could I have any expectation that they would get a stop when they couldn't stop Florida State ever, Ole Miss ever, or Missouri ever? Now, finally, they showed up late in that game against Missouri and got a couple of stops. Perkins made a play. They, they finally made a couple of stops. But there was a point there where I was just going, this is not even worth engaging with emotionally. And I got to do a post-game show on this. And so I don't know exactly why that happened. But it was really, really bad. And it was evident that they needed to make some significant changes in a hurry. And Brian Kelly did. He basically let go of the entire defensive staff. And position by position, they stacked it back up after hiring Blake Baker. And this is what Blake Baker had to say about the staff that's now accompanying him on the defensive side of the ball. The one thing, having experience with all four of these guys that I'm about to mention, I can say from the bottom of my heart, I do believe we have the best defensive staff in the, in the country. Yeah. And that's not only just from an X's and O's standpoint, but the way they're able to build relationships with the players, the way they're able to get the most out of their players um, is second to none. And I don't know if that's true or not. It's subjective that LSU has the best defensive staff in the country. And I would expect that there are quite a few defensive staff members around the country that would suggest they have the best defensive staff in the country. So I don't really care necessarily if it's the best or the second best or the fourth best. What I can tell you is in terms of skins on the wall and reputation in the sport, it's pretty impressive. A lot of people know who Corey Raymond is. You sit, driving around listening to me in the car or on YouTube listening to me after the fact, I mean, how many defensive backs coach in college football can you name? I think a bunch of nine LSU folks can name Corey Raymond. How many defensive line coaches in the country can you name? Not a lot. I feel like there are quite a few that can name Bo Davis. Blake Baker has had a pretty meteoric rise here over the last five years. From his time at Miami, and then to LSU, and then up to Missouri, back to LSU, he's he's earned some skins on the wall. And so, I can't sit here and tell you that LSU has the best defensive staff in the in the country, but I can tell you that they've got a lot of guys that are proven to be very quality defensive coaches, and that is is comforting. The previous staff, yeah, you had some name recognition there. You had some guys that have had been in the NFL. 
you also had some guys who were very, very early in their career, and it just kind of swallowed swallowed them up. They just couldn't quite get it together. This group feels like they're going to tighten that up pretty quickly, just a matter of what the dudes are that they've got. T-Bob made a point to ask Blake Baker about Damone Clark, and we're not going to necessarily dive too deeply into that, but I think a lot of you realize just how good a turnaround Damone Clark had under Blake Baker, and he became a 130-tackle player. And that's the position that Blake Baker is going to be asked to coach this time around. And you've got, obviously, Greg Penn there, and then he mentioned Harold Perkins in this interview as well. But I think there are some more guys that he expects to play, and you know, Whit Weeks is one of those, but potentially his older brother as well. And this was Blake Baker talking about his inside linebackers. You know, I feel extremely confident in our inside linebacker room. The one guy to me that I think you're hearing it first on July 8th, but I think he, he's really been slept on is West Weeks. I think he yeah. had an outstanding wow. spring. But when you talk about those four guys, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think all four of them have different skill sets. All four of them are really, really good college football players. So that's one of the challenges for me, honestly, going into you know fall camp is you want to get guys really good at a position. And then once they do that, now it's okay. How can we move these pieces of, of the puzzle around? How can we get them on the field more uh, often together? And that's something that we're definitely toying with throughout the month of July and going into fall camp because I think those are four of our best players on defense. You got a chance there to be pretty good at linebacker. I think Greg Penn is very, very functional player. Uh, I say this a lot, um, but I, I, I think it's a good visual for me and, and hopefully a good you know kind of metaphor for you. Um, baseball's got a stat called war. It's wins above replacement. You can have a minus, you're worse than average. You can have a, a plus, you're better than average. If you're Mike Trout, you've got a monster wins above replacement. If you're you know Juan Soto, you've got a monster wins above replacement. If you're the fourth outfielder for the Pirates, you're not you're gonna have a negative war. Um, I think Greg Penn, as SEC inside linebackers go, is about a zero war. I think he's about average. I don't think he's going to be the first team all league backer. I don't think he's a complete disaster who's a liability out there. I think he's right there uh, on, on average. And I think that Harold Perkins has a chance to be much better than that. I think Whit Weeks has a chance to be much better than that. And those are the three guys I expect to get the most playing time. But he mentioned West Weeks there. And West Weeks is a freshman at Virginia. Got one start, made 30 ta- 31 tackles on the year. And he's come here to LSU, and while he's played in 27 games, he hasn't started any, and he's been kind of a special teams guy who's played a little bit of mop-up duty. But he's not deficient, really, in any in any way other than production. He's six two, 240 pounds. He's a senior. He plays hard. He's played some, some special teams and a little bit of defense. Like, if that's your second team inside backer, like, that's... That's not a guy that's unproven. That's not a guy that is 20 pounds under his playing weight. I, I, I'm glad to hear that West Weeks had a really nice fall, uh, spring. Because that's a guy who may have to play a little bit if there are some injuries or whatnot. But I feel like he does have a point that Perkins, Penn, and the two weeks really do give you a, a nice core at, at inside linebacker. And hopefully those guys play very, very well. I I painted a little bit of an optimistic picture there at linebacker, and we all know what the situation is uh, at defensive line. And Blake Baker alluded to that and said, you know, some people think we're going to be the 85 Bears. I have to temper those uh, those, uh, conversations a little bit. But I was comforted by one of the things he said about what they've got at defensive tackle, and this was kind of his answer, talking about the interior defensive line. If a defensive tackle position, I'd say we're going to be, you know, by committee. I think there's a bunch of different body types. There's a bunch of different skill sets. Again, it's, it's going to be a little more difficult on me knowing I got to figure out who's in the game, when they're in the game, and then try to call the game according to those skill sets and matchups. But I look at, at what we did at Missouri the last two years, and we really rotated four inside guys. Three of them were seniors. None of them, none of them got drafted. All good college football players, yeah. but not the elite of the elite. And um, we're going to be creative with them and using their skill sets, moving them around, you know, pre-snap and post-snap, being able to stun them and use some of their quickness, maybe where they lack size, or a guy like Tank who has great size and strength, again, not moving him as much, so it'll be a little bit more onus on me as the play caller. I liked that answer a lot. It gave me a little bit of solace. Um, to hear that he fielded what people thought was a quality defense at Missouri and his interior defensive tackles were not draftable players, were seniors, 
He didn't need third round draft choices and future pro bowlers to fill the functional field of functional defense. I don't mean this as a slight. I really don't. I'm just making a comparison that I think most of y'all will uh, will understand. I think John Chavis had a brilliant career as an SEC defensive coordinator. I thought the players he coached at LSU were exceptional. And then he went to A&M and they didn't have him and it got a little worse. And then he went to Arkansas and he had nothing and it was terrible. And you see how obviously great players make great coaches, but there are some coaches that need that level of player to get things done. And towards the end, John Chavis didn't have him and couldn't coach him. I take a little bit of solace in the fact that Blake Baker's going, look, I've had fourth and fifth year college players on my defensive line who were never going to make the Titans practice squad. But we figured it out because they could do some things. I had to get a little bit more creative. I understand if I've got Jacoby and Guillory out there, he's not moving anywhere. If I've got some other guys out there that do move a little bit better, like Paris Shand, maybe we need to stunt him because he's better when he comes off a stunt and maybe they confuse the, the offensive front as opposed to just winning a battle one-on-one or one-on-two. I'm not saying it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy about the LSU defensive line, but I liked that quote. It's going, hey, I've done this a different way. We're going to have to do that this time around at LSU. I think the goal would be to not have to do anything super creative or super fancy or to try to camouflage a perceived talent disadvantage. Eventually, we'll just go up there and whip your butt at the line of scrimmage and win the game. But for right now, we might have to do it a little differently, and I've done that before. I like that answer from uh, from Blake Baker. Final thing that we've got here from the LSU defensive coordinator is talking about this summer and scouting uh, Southern Cal, who LSU will play in the opener on Labor Day weekend. I looked at USC probably more so than I have in, in seasons past this opener, just because I've never gone against Lincoln uh, before. Mm. So kind of getting a feel for what he likes to do. I know a lot of their personnel is turned over. And, and honestly, I had this conversation with another defense coordinator yesterday. I would say like the summer scouting, even five to definitely 10 years ago, has changed just because of the transfer portal. Yeah. You know, the glimpse you might yeah. get on a personnel, you might be from a spring game, you know, aired on, on ESPN or SEC network or, or, or what have you. So, um, but but with, with USC, obviously, the opponent, uh, and then my first time going against Coach Riley, definitely studied them more than than probably I have hope. Uh, excuse me, openers in the past. I think that's fascinating too, um, because this, this game is so important to LSU to go up there and win. And I think we all understand this perfectly. But uh, if there was ever anyone who thought that you could really glean something game plan wise from the spring game, Blake Baker saying the only thing I've got on some guys, is watching the spring game should indicate, yeah, there's, they're not going to show you much there. If that's what the, the only thing the coaches have to game plan on, probably going to avoid that uh, to a degree uh, on uh, on spring game day. So just some thoughts from Blake Baker. If you're looking for LSU football content, you can find it on YouTube. Hunt on LSU is our channel. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button. Leave your comments below and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.